the idea for a forum of this kind was triggered by Olela Manu's public criticism of UCT. And yet one very sharp statistic that UCT does not have a single black female full professor. The problem about the debate, it's good to have the debate, the problem is that most of it has been conducted in the pages of newspapers, national newspapers. And of course, debates of that kind are never sustained. You lose some of the trends, you lose some of the strains in the discussions and we're never able to pin them down. And hence we thought the best thing is to have this as a platform where we talk about these things, we put them on the table. So that's, that's what we, we, we're trying to do here. And this is the first, and hopefully there'll be more uh, in the new year. It's a big debate, and so we're happy to welcome other people. And from time to time, we will try and invite people, speakers, and, and other uh, members of the audience from outside. Professor Mampeji Pake, uh, uh, or Haiti, is the vice principal at UNISA. Um, I woke up this morning at home and I thought, wow, I cannot believe that I accepted this invitation to go to UCT to talk about transformation, uh, which is not my area of research or speciality, which I do because uh, of who I am and the office that I occupy at the moment. And I, and I thought, well, am I taking myself to the slaughter? And so, <laughs> and so I, I, I prepared a PowerPoint deliberately because I thought if I walk into the hall and I see who's in the hall, I might just change what I say. So I did it firstly to make sure that I don't change what I say, what I want to say, that it's cemented and it's even worse because I don't even have control of it. It's at the back, so I won't even have control to jump slides and so on. So, so, so this is self-control at its best. <laughs> he is the Vice Chancellor of UCT and has been in that position since 2008. And um, before that, he had university experience elsewhere, uh, principally at, at, at Fed's University in Johannesburg. The challenge in addressing a panel, or being part of a panel addressing this topic at this moment is that it has, as the Chair said, been triggered by a particular debate around the Black Professoriate and the paucity of Black academics, particularly in senior positions. In the and then finally we have uh, Professor Jonathan Janssen, and I learned uh, that at three stage, they just call him JJ for the <laughs> to save time. No matter what you think, and I'm saying this particularly to those of you who are in political formations uh, that want it done tomorrow morning. Uh, transformation is not a straight line. It is difficult, it is messy, it is costly, and it is sometimes life-threatening. Nobody told me, and I don't mean this, I say this lightly, nobody told me that I would receive at least once a month a very serious death threat from somewhere in the country and sometimes out of the country. In fact, just two days ago, my colleague came to warn me and sort of said there was a discussion about who can wants the rector for Hafta, poison, and so on. Now, that might sound funny to you, it's not funny to me. We try and are doing it. We have renamed lots of buildings because we recognize that the architecture of the place and the history says to people from different cultures and different language groups that maybe they don't belong here. So we have now the Mafeji room, we have the Duma Bakwa room, we have the Adil Murat, the Dalla Omar, uh, the Neville Alexander, the AC Jordan, the Jack Simons, the Medieva Circle. In the last three or four years, we have made a significant effort to shape and, and the symbolism of the, of the university. Um, the debate, as it has been uh, in the newspapers, has been about numbers. And, and I'm not sure if numbers are useful. I'm not sure if numbers tell us everything. And I think uh, 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 if we're going to talk about numbers, then we should, we should also critique what numbers are we looking at. Uh, that's not to say numbers are, are not important. Experiences of the oppressed were different. Experiences of a black South African woman or man or, or an Indian man or a 
uh, Indian or colored or white women are different. Now, I, I, want, I want a system where, which recognizes that, which says, well, the government is serious about transformation and they're doing something about it. And so they're going to reward universities that are doing it, not in terms of how many people they're promoting, but how many, how do universities um, improve on the number of black South African academics producing out there? And I want to tell you the standards of the historically white universities in South Africa, including UCT, has always been low. Don't let anybody tell you it's always been high. Okay? Don't be misled. <laughs> a framework that defines levels of scholarship. And I did that because I was worried. I mean, I, I did that. Uh, this is my third year in, 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 in this office. And I, and I noticed that people are so obsessed with productivity, just getting the number of outputs, research outputs, just so that they can get the promotion. And then most importantly, and this is what makes faculties act and do all sorts of, and try to do all sorts of things to, to, to improve our transformation, is rewarding transformation. Okay, where I said you have a formula, you make sure that um, if, you, if you have more black professors, black academics producing outputs, then you get a benefit. Okay, so, so that makes them think, okay, you want more money, you, you're going to have to do something. Whether you do writing retreats, whether, whatever you do. Okay, so, so it forces heads of departments and deans and leadership in faculties to think carefully about what is it that they do, how do they support their people, and how can they keep a black, a black academic from leaving their, 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 their faculty. The front page article a couple of days ago in the New York Times by Eve Fairbanks called The Paradox of Integration, please read it, shows clearly that access in itself does not satisfy in South Africa and in our country the desire of black students for recognition and staff, for recognition and inclusion in former white universities. I want to argue that the longer universities take to deeply transform themselves, the more vulnerable we become to state interference in this important project. And when that happens, the academic project and its transformation ambitions will truly be, as they say in our other language, ungedrag. Thank you. <laughs>